I came down the river today to uh, get my engine started. I do have a, a you know a flood plan, and my flood plan is: I come down to the boat, I get the engine started, get it all ready, and then go back home and wait for the flood. Uh, this flood, uh, I went down to the boat, uh, got I had to put a uh, water pump on. Took me about half an hour. Thought, oh, I'm doing really well here. I turned the uh, seacock to turn the water on. I couldn't turn it on. So I put a ring spanner on it. And I tried to pull it round with that. SD25 sail leg. Anyway, couldn't do that. Tried and tried anyway. When I uh, wanted to get off the boat, the uh, tide was going out and the water was going by the boat too fast to get safely get in the dinghy. So I uh, blew my rubber dinghy up that was on board the boat put the engine on it and uh, I, w I still wouldn't go that night it was just going too fast down the river I, I, if, I, if anything happened you know it, it was in the dark and anything had happened so I stayed on the boat safest play to be next day the tide was coming in not first thing in the morning but there was a major part of the flood coming in so or well, the current had backed off a bit so I got in the dinghy and went ashore and uh, Jack came down with a socket set and a grinder so I uh, I ground the ground the uh, socket set so it fit on the uh, tap on the sail drive anyway I did that and it was perfect turned it click opened up I'm uh, I'm on my boat down at on the mooring at Belimba and with these floods, uh, things are not looking so good really. There's uh, quite a lot of boats gone by us in the night. And we've got a boat there heading down the river now. And there's a pontoon there with a boat on. And behind that, as you can see, there's just a canoe or something. Yeah. And uh, in the night, there's uh, probably seven seven boats at least adrift have come uh, down the uh, river yeah my moorings holding in at the moment with the uh, made with you know a decent strop of uh, 12 meters I think of rope and then 10 meters of chain and then a, a railway wheel and uh, yeah it's doing it's holding me here at the moment but uh, the problem is I came out here and it's, you know get everything ready so I'm start the engine and probably go down the river and I can't open the seacock on my sail drive it's seized and I need a socket set uh, and a grinder in order to make a tool to uh, purchase it harder than I can with a, uh, a little ring spanner. There's another pontoon going by. It's only about 400, 500 meters past the other one. Got a couple of boats on. You've got a port hand mark out over there that's drifted down that was from the Blimber Reach probably 500 meters it's moved yeah that's basically how much rain we've had overnight is what's in there and in that bucket so we've probably had 200 mils Yeah, there's something going by there. I don't know what it is. It's another pontoon. And looking in front, there's this catamaran here. And that's come down on me. And uh, everybody else seems to be all right. Here's another pontoon going down the river. This is my uh, dinghy here. I haven't finished uh, blowing it up yet. It's been too uh, too wet. 
I've got soaked and I needed something else to uh, fix it with. I need a special fitting and I can't find it yet. And if it's in the back locker, I'll, you know, I've, I've already tried and I don't want to put too much water down it. I don't like any of these pontoons, you know. I've had a, I've seen at least six or seven pontoons this morning go right down the uh, water and you know basically I reckon with all these luxury houses if they want to put a bloody pontoon there they got to put the piles up high enough for the floods so they don't come off all right. I'm not going outside to film this but uh, just there's loads of pontoons gone by I don't come out for every pontoon and now we've got water tanks coming down the river. A little bit of thunder there. Tide's running pretty quick by the boat. And it's uh, a lot quicker over the other side. We're in the kind of lee of the tide here or in, on the inside of the river. Outside is running a lot faster. come out because it's just come out it's stopped raining and uh, I can see two pontoons here floating by these have all come up from somewhere near Indrapilly somewhere like that on waterfront homes uh, the trouble is is uh, I think I've already said before that they don't make the piles long enough so we're up there so it's uh, you know they're pretty dangerous and if they hit a boat or anything on the way down you know they're going to be it's going to be rather uh, destructive before it hits the sea here we have my old neighbor from up uh, when i was on the club mooring here and uh, another boat that's on one of the club moorings they've clashed together with a yellow boy that's come up from basically drifted down I think from uh, the Limba ferry terminal anyway is they're both uh, slowly going down the river they're in probably 16 meters maybe at least 12 meters of water there and I think uh, the white boat has still got its uh, the mooring on attached to the uh, attached to the front of the boat not sure at least the uh, at least it's got the chain there and you've got a marine rescues boat here and you've got the police and I think they're just going to guide them down the river Well, my phone's gone down below, so I better answer it. Here's another pontoon going down the uh, river. And over here is my dinghy. It's, uh, it's ready to launch at the moment. I'm just waiting for the rain to stop. I think another hour and it probably, uh, I think this is the last of it. Here we've got another uh, pontoon going down the river. I haven't been able to get off the boat today and there's a catamaran behind and it's got quite a bit of uh, weed on its uh, mooring, pulling it down at the front. The uh, current's quite strong at the moment.
I've got a self-failing uh, boat here. And uh, look, I'll just show you there how fast it's going by. Looking down the river, there's Hardy Mist. I used to have a catamaran behind me and a catamaran just in front and uh, lost both last night. Uh, the catamaran behind just gave me a clip and ripped one of my solar panels off but uh, luckily I've still got it. I'm in a back eddy here. Arrived at the club pontoon. The flood mark, uh, the last flood mark is painted on the pontoon there. And that's a big duck there, it's full up, so is the other one. It's kind of going by here pretty quick. And as you see, all the club moorings have gone now. It was uh, pretty bad here. The, uh, the tide had been, uh, normally kind of goes out the other side of the river, but with the flood it's, it's belting on down here. And this is the club, it's flooded now, right up to uh, basically where my uh, dinghy's parked. Here at the Brisbane Sailing Club, I'm just going to do a bit of work in Master's Shed there, trying to make myself a fitting to undo my seacock. There's the pontoon over there. You don't often see the mat, see the boat ramp going uphill. And here's the other ramp here. Got a boat alongside. It broke off its mooring a little bit further up, and he's tied it up there at the moment. Here's a pontoon going by. I think near, I think all of the pontoons basically from around the Jindalee area are ending up down here. Here's a few for, uh, here's a few uh, pontoons coming down the river. There's a big lot tree has dropped onto that boat there. I'm worried about this one just here coming. That one. Mm, I'd be worried about that. Mm. Yeah. yeah, there's that one there with the tree in it. Kind of an aluminium thing there. That's kind of aiming for my boat, I think. Just got to hope it misses. And now we've got all the little icebergs coming down. I've had three nights on the uh, boat in the uh, Brisbane River near Balimba. I spent two nights on the mooring and uh, uh, my plan was to come down to the boat, get the engine started and go out into Moreton Bay. But I got down here 
put my new uh, put my water pump back on that I'd serviced tried to uh, open the seacock that's on the side of the engine it was seized tried to ring spanner on it wouldn't work so anyway I uh, had to go and cut a plug spanner to fit with a kind of groove in it that fitted round the uh, fitted round the uh, tap. Anyway, as soon as I did that, one crack opened, could turn it by hand. Anyway, last night I uh, my uh, got that all done. Sitting down, having a bit of a rest. Tide was ripping out, and uh, I uh, the the uh, mooring let go. So by the time you know and I've started to drift down the river, I thought, where am I going to uh, put the mooring down? Where I can use it again? So anyway, the mooring is basically behind me, uh, and I hope I hope it'll be in a it's in a spot where I can use it when the when the current uh, eases off for a while before I can relocate it. Looking up river. I've got, uh, I was anchored basically where that boat is in front and uh, I uh, and I've drifted back during the night uh, to here. I've got 30 meters of chain out and my uh, Rockner anchor on so I've I've dragged through quite a bit of archaeology to here, so I hope I'll be able to get it up. And uh, I'm in the, in the nice posh area with all the houses. So I was a bit worried of uh, ending up on the end on the back of Baku here last night as I came down, but we're uh, we've managed pretty well. And I'm just going to try and get the anchor up now. I won't be able to film it. I've got too much to do. Well, I'm underway again now. Going by, by Lodestar, I think it is, with Graham and Fiona on. This is Dai's boat back there. It's looking good. Not much duckweed on it. Four seasons. Never seen this thing move. You know, it's kind of it's got a fair bit of duckweed, but he's uh, hanging in there okay. My uh, tutu or something. You know, he stayed there pretty good as well. Looking up at Belimba now, you can see that uh, most of the moorings have gone. Well, I'm alongside now the Club Jetty. Yeah, that went pretty well. Just kept the motor running. Motor's still running now, taking a bit of the weight off the ropes. And uh, gonna go and uh, take this dinghy ashore now and the outboard that goes with it. Uh, just clear the decks off a bit before I go down uh, Brisbane River. You can see right up the river there, there is one boat moored and a police boat patrolling up there. Just gonna... I'm gonna get off the pontoon now. And I think the trick is, is just to raise the rev so that uh, I haven't got much weight on the spring here. And then I'll uh, get off and untie the line and get back on again. 
and that's the club. It's been quite a lot higher than that. To see Dai's boat when I come back. Here's Jamie. I think he's coming out. So, good luck, Jamie. Silver William. He's got a log round the front of the boat there. And uh, he hasn't come down yet, but he's got a bloody good uh, mooring to hold him in this. You know, he kind of, uh, you know, comes number one in uh, moorings. You're not going to come down, you get a mooring like he's got. Mooring is uh, somewhere there, about probably 90 meters across. That's where I dropped it. Hopefully I'll see it when the uh, current stops running. Thing there you might be able to see in the screen is a it's the harbour a marines mooring they used to put the uh, stranded boats on and this uh, boat here it's still uh, pretty pretty good shape but uh, it's a deceased estate For those people that uh, go on the Lady Brisbane, that's where it's moored at the moment, down here. And there's the ferry terminal down here with all the icebergs. I hope the uh, people out of the posh houses up uh, Indra Pili have to pay to clean them all away. Anyway, we're making good progress down to the uh, bridge. Here's where quite a few of the pontoons ended up. Somebody might get their dinghy back. And pontoon, maybe. This is Howard Street Wharf, this is. Generally used for scrap metal. I bring the trucks in along there and lift the bins straight in the, uh, in the ship, empty them and drop them back on the trucks. And they run 24 hours a day till they fill the ship up. This this is the North Hamilton jetty. This is all the boats piled up against it. Pancaked under his stern of the vessel. That's a sugar boat. A couple of boats alongside there. Good place to go actually. It's quite a nice, uh, I think it's a catamaran or a trimaran over there, I'm not sure. Going by Rivergate now, and all the boats in Rivergate have uh, 
the five fairly well. One boat here has sunk between the uh, two boats there. I bet there is a whole, a whole reef of them down there, I reckon. I've made it over to the sand hills anyway, over in Morton Island. Uh, quite a breeze, quite breezy at the moment. Uh, made it over here and I'm going to take the sails down and go into the blue hole get in a bit of shelter and try and get a bit of sleep we've got a fishing boat in front and then a couple, three boats down there that I assume have come out of Brisbane River. There's the small sand hill there. You can see the sand banks. We're in about 2.4 of water here. I'm not going to go much uh, further and I'm going to put the anchor down. bit rolly here and they reckon it's going to go around maybe to the north so I'm going into Blue Hole which is basically behind me now I suppose and uh, it's a lot better in there it's uh, basically you've got a sandbank between you and the sea and you stops the swell Anyway, I'll pull the anchor up and get underway. Uh, I'd like to get in there before dark, but I've got to be just on the cusp of dark because the uh, tide's about nine, nine o'clock tonight. And uh, I need to get in there and I'll probably only have about a meter of water at the moment. So I'll have to have my keel up and be ready, ready to come up. Yeah, well, that's uh, in front of us is a kind of oyster leases. And where I'm going is basically at the end of that island there, which is Crab Island. I'll be anchoring somewhere in there. It's my second day out the river over at Blue Hole. It's blowing quite hard now. It must be blowing at least, uh, I'd say, 20 to 25 knots. Quite a bit of white water coming down there, but we're okay here, and uh, I've got a nice book to read. And uh, over the, in front of me there is uh, all the oyster leases, but uh, you've got to think about it. You know they've been hit by COVID with all the restaurants closed. Well, I've made it over to Blue Hole. I've been here two days now. The first day I just had a rest. You know, surprising uh, when you come out the river, you know, how much adrenaline you must have used or something. So I was very, pretty very much tired. Anyway, today I read a book. Uh, this isn't a bit of radio, but it's pretty depressing on Brisbane and the floods. And uh, this afternoon the sun came out, so I thought, right, I'll dive on the boat and I'll clean the propeller and a bit of the back of the boat of barnacles. Anyway, that worked out very well. There was no sea lice on the bottom of the boat. 
have all been washed off. It was like it had been half pressure cleaned actually. So I was very pleased. So, you know, when I got out of the uh, water, I wasn't covered in sea lice. I'm protected uh, by a kind of sandbank right across in front of me. But as you can see, the sand hills are over there and the rain's coming again. Uh, they close the schools tomorrow because they're not sure where this rain's going to land and all the uh, rivers and uh, streams are uh, and all the uh, you know the fields are all full of water so it doesn't matter if you don't get too much rain you're going to flood the uh, rivers so they've closed the schools for safety reasons tomorrow in South East Queensland. two boats anchored out there they've closed the port at the moment and uh, somewhere in there is the sunset and behind the boat which is here is Crab Island and the oyster leases which uh, since it's low tide you can see all the uh, frames there Anyway, I'm going to cook me a meal in a minute, which is going to be a piece of salmon, a few beans and a few carrots. I'd like to thank all my subscribers who have been shouting me a beer. Thank you very much. I needed one tonight. After getting flushed out the Brisbane River, I uh, went to Blue Hole, had a couple of days there and then I've uh, moved over to Coongal and uh, the reason for that is uh, I can go walking on the beach which is just behind the barge there. I've had some very good, really good walks and now I'm uh, heading off now up towards uh, Dunnage I think, I'm not quite sure yet but we'll see when we get there. This boat's bringing in a few trees for landscaping and stuff. And then I came up and came through here and there was about three boats in here. Yeah. So they're yeah. either freaking yeah. desperate. Yeah. Oh, yeah, a lot of them are missing this. Yeah, um, yeah, some of them, you know, they've only got a couple of months to do. So anyway, yeah, that was quite a. I came in here for a night, you know. mm -hmm. but I'm coming in the winter here and coming in the winter. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, like in the summer, in you know, like yeah, mid March, mm -hmm. and then you know, you know, like 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 of like mist coming out and all that, and it's freezing. Yeah. And that, hey, I don't know if you've been here then. Yeah, it's bloody hell, hey.